Engaging in the literary world and discovering what books are out there is always beneficial. Consider the comp hunt both a rite of passage and a learning opportunity. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Star Werdeman. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee S's. I really like our topic today. It is something I think that most authors, when they are getting to the publishing stage, when they're trying to do the marketing, this is what they struggle with, I think, more than anything, other than like actual marketing, because that's a whole different skill set. Today's question is, how do I determine the comp titles? And the quick answer to this is the vibes which is difficult to define, but I think a lot of people get that wrong when pulling up comp titles. So a lot of them go for plot elements that are similar or even genre types. That's something that's listed elsewhere in your query letter because most comp titles are used for either marketing or querying agents slash publishers. When really we're talking about just the vibes of this story, How does it feel? How does it play? First, we need to explain what a comp title is. Comp stands for comparable. A comp title is basically you giving a book to somebody, whether that is an agent or a publisher or part of your marketing process, giving your book to somebody and saying, this book has similar vibes, similar themes, similar whatever as this, this, and this book that you may be familiar with. At least in the film industry, you can say things in your film script query letter going, it's this story meets that story, and that overlap is where your story lives. I saw recently a indie author on TikTok talking about a book that they're currently working on or planning to work on, And it was The Witcher meets Firefly. And I was like, I am in for that. Give me Witcher vibes with like Firefly setting. I am here for it. Witcher setting with Firefly scripting. Oh, yes. A comp title also exists to help give the person who you're trying to sell your book to an idea of the target market. So if you're saying something like it's a steampunk Game of Thrones. Okay. This gives us a vibe of the world building, the politics, the magic, the storytelling. And we know there's already a market for that because there's a market for Game of Thrones and steampunk. However, there are some misconceptions with comp titles, some things to be careful for. First off, your comp titles are not books that share similar plots. You are looking instead for books books that share similar audiences. Again, comp titles is part of the marketing. Marketing is all about finding your audience. You want to go to the audience and know what they've read, what sort of books they're interested in. They don't always care if the plots are similar. They actually kind of want a little variety in the plots, but they want a story with the same vibes, the same feel, the same genre. That's what they're looking for. And it's not just genre, because if you look at the romance category, there are so many different flavors of romance. So having something beyond just genre, which should also be in your query letter. My fantasy stories are much closer to Jim Butcher fantasy than they are to Brandon Sanderson fantasy. Yeah, Outlander and something like Book Lovers, they may both be romances, but they are totally different. They are different sort of settings. They are different categories, different feels and moods and what happens in them. Totally different. There are a lot of different categories. So just picking one that is also in that genre is not enough work. You need to get more specific. Another misconception is that you need to know this as you're writing your book, as you're going through that first draft or latest that first edit. That is simply not the case. You write your story as selfishly as possible, and then you figure out what those comp titles are later. You figure them out as you're querying, as you're starting to market your book. 
And really, you have to make sure the book is complete because some of the feels, some of the themes, the vibes, they might change as you're writing, as you're editing and putting it all together. So it's not until the very end that you're going to start looking for those comp titles. And don't go to other people looking for those. One of the things that we see a misconception a lot is that people think that just by explaining the plot of their book, people will be able to offer up comp titles to help them out. Unless that person has read your book, they know the vibes, they will not be able to give you an accurate comp title. And I feel like a lot of the people that you're asking would be very biased in their own pickings. So if you have a reader who reads a lot of YA fantasy, they're going to say like, oh, that to me sounds like Caraval with a little bit of Gallant by V.E. Schwab. But so much of the issue is they're looking at plot. They're going, it sounds like this kind of plot. They haven't read your book. So they can't tell you the vibes are like this. The vibes of Jim Butcher are a lot like Early Reacher. If you're looking for comp titles from other people, make sure they are your beta readers. They are your alpha readers, maybe your arc readers. Arc readers have a different purpose, but they also might be able to point you in the right direction. Then read that book. And then if it falls under everything else, then you're allowed to include it as a comp title. The most common times that you are going to be looking for a comp title is if you're self-publishing, when you're in the marketing process, or if you are looking to traditionally publish when you are querying agents. Offering the comp titles is a good way for you to say up front, here are the known books in the writing world that I'm familiar with that match the vibes of this story. So if you like those kinds of books, you may be interested in looking further into mine. But there are a lot of things people do wrong when they are querying agents with comp titles. So we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of that process. The biggest thing you can do to make an agent or a publisher not even continue looking at that query letter is to throw out super big names. I'm something like Stephen King and Dean Koontz. Not only are they tremendously different writing styles, but those are names that my dad knows. So that's what you want to look for to steer away from. Any authors who would be household names, names that even people not super familiar with the publishing industry would recognize. Danielle Steele, Stephen King, James Patterson, these really big hit authors. For one, a lot of them are a little too old, which we will talk about in a little bit, but they are just too well known. When you use these big names, it makes you either look self-aggrandizing or amateurish because you aren't showing your familiarity with the more in-depth publishing industry. The next thing to avoid in your query letter when you are looking at comp titles is a really old book. It's somewhere between Pride and Prejudice and Harry Potter. Both of those are older than 10 years or so, which shows that you aren't up to date with today's audiences and today's market. Ideally, you want to use books that have been published within the last five years. Because you are showing, hey, I'm familiar with what is happening right now in the publishing industry, what people are interested in right now. Especially recently, publishing trends are moving pretty quickly. So you need to keep it up to date. Keep your comp titles up to date. So you, when you contact those literary agents, can show with the comp titles, I am familiar with what people want right now. And this is why my book fits into that category. I also want to point out that it's much better to use books as comp titles than authors because V.E. Schwab has a wide collection of different types of books that she's written. So saying it's a lot closer to The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Okay, now we have a vibe that we can align our spirits to for your book. And really, you want to have two or three different books picked out that match your vibes and be specific about why they're comp titles, not just, oh, it's in the same genre 
talk about why specifically those are the comp titles. Do you have the similar writing style as this specific book from this specific author? Do you have a magic system that feels kind of Sanderson-ish, but is wholly unique? So if you were writing a fantasy and there's a lot of dark, dry, almost insult humor, you can say this book in the humor is a lot like Bill McCurry's Death's Collector series. Because that is a signature reason why people read that collection of books is because that character has insult humor down pat. So narrowing it down and saying that, if you like this, then we're going for that. And of course, when you are querying with, don't leave out comp titles. Don't just say, oh, mine is super unique and you won't find anything else like it. Because you sound ignorant and way too proud of your writing. You're also telling the people on the other side of the query letter, there is no market for my stuff. (laughs) No one out there is reading stuff like this, which is counterproductive at best. So if you don't have comp titles, make sure you're reaching out to your writing club, to your community at large, and going, hey, what are some books you recommend that have these kinds of vibes to it? Go read the books. There is no deadline on publishing. You don't have to do it. I wouldn't recommend querying this time of year anyway. Spend your time doing your research on comp titles, and you can be so much more successful with how that comes across and finding the right publisher and the right agent for you. But you can't find a comp title unless you have the book ready to go. So start by writing selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 